Okay, hello everyone and welcome to my weekly trading roadmap for the week starting the 17th of August 2015. Now, unfortunately I won't um, be trading next week, or this week rather for those of you that are listening in. I'm recording this a little bit uh, earlier in in the previous week, actually recording this on a Thursday. So. Uh, the reason being I'm leaving tomorrow for a two-week holiday and uh, I'm not going to be able to show you guys a great deal of market context only because uh, a lot can change obviously in a day um, by the time we get to the week close. So what I'm going to be going through really is just the event driven risks, not looking at any market structures unfortunately, but I'm sure all the other traders of Futex um, through the Futex Live platform will have more than enough to say about how the markets are structured so keep a very close eye um, on that as well uh, also Simon um, does a very good stream on Monday mornings that covers uh, the market structure um, and Brannigan will also surely go through some of that on his in his Monday debrief so there's places to be covered um, or things to be covered as well so Please keep an eye on those as well on the website. Um, but for now, like I said, I'm just going to be going to the adventure and risks and hopefully try and make a decent roadmap for how you guys can trade it. Um, so looking at the week ahead, Monday, from a data point standpoint, we only really have the New York Empire uh, Manufacturing Index. Not a very big market mover. It used to be. It seems like now it's kind of died down, so I wouldn't put too much emphasis on that. Uh, I think a lot of uh, the the trading you should be doing on um, Monday, if because it's such a low data um, data point type day, not really much data or market news uh, apart from anything that might come out of let's say China. Um, in that respect, you should probably just be looking to trade the market really quite technically. And the first and foremost things, remember to look at your value areas on your market profile. Now, coming into Tuesday. Quite an important day for the UK markets. We've got the UK core inflation. And as we very well know, uh, it seems like recently the, the BOE has been starting to take a slightly more hawkish standpoint. Um, even though we did get a slightly more dovish uh, QIR and the vote structure was at 8-1, which is a little bit more dovish than we were expecting at 7-2, the rhetoric has actually been relatively hawkish. And I think the main outlier here is inflation. All other aspects, uh, for example, wage inflation is really quite high if you look at it um, over the last five years or even over the last decade. It, it's relatively high, but inflation is really the one that's low. So I think that is the one that the Bank of England is really looking at. So if we do get a, a sharp rise in inflation, I think there could be some really decent market pricing keep an eye on your short stirs, the short-term interest rates in uh, the UK markets, as well as, of course, your gilts and your um, your pound. The cable is obviously uh, going to be very sensitive to this kind of information. Um, obviously, higher than expected inflation numbers should send the cable higher, and lower than expected inflation numbers should send the cable lower. Um, so that is pretty much on the UK front. And then we have the US housing starts and the US building permits as a gauge of how the housing market's doing in the US on Tuesday. Keep a close eye on that, obviously, as well. The, the, the Fed is looking, obviously, at not only jobs in the labor market um, and retail sales, but the wider health of the economy. And I, I'm sure they're going to be keeping an eye on all aspects of um how the economy is progressing so the housing market is a very good gauge on uh, how the real economy is faring if we take a look at the central bank policy for Tuesday is really the RBA meeting uh, minutes uh, so we're not really expecting much uh, out of the meeting minutes but do keep an eye and maybe that if there is any sort of reference to uh, China or anything like that that could give us an indication that there's a f an easing bias, uh, then potentially we might get some weakening is weakening in the Aussie dollar. We've obviously seen some significant weakening um, initially off of the Chinese devaluation of their currency, and we're currently sitting at some pretty key levels. Um, so do keep an eye on this. It, it could be 
relatively market moving. On Wednesday is pretty much the biggest day of the week if um, if we take it from a standpoint of data points in central banks. We've got the US core inflation rate which is very key for the Fed policy. The DOE crude oil inventory is not as much. Um, that comes out obviously every week but it, we also have the FOMC minutes which um, if we could get any sort of clues in those minutes as to how uh, or sorry when the Fed is actually going to lift off in rates um, that's really going to be quite interesting because from what we saw last time what they said was they're looking for some improvement in the labor market uh, and overall the you know it, it, there wasn't much in the statement it seemed like pretty much the same statement as before but maybe this you know the, the devil's in the details uh, so just keep an eye on the FOMC minutes just in case there's anything in there that could indicate that they might be willing to hike rates in September obviously the market has slightly shifted um, away from September only because of that Chinese rate hike um, I mean sorry that Chinese devaluation and you know potentially if there's something really substantially um, important that comes out of the minutes that that could be very market moving because we're getting very very close to September coming into Thursday we have the UK retail sales US existing home sales and the US Philly Fed retail sales obviously probably being the biggest market mover for the UK um, as in the biggest market mover for that day uh, in the UK markets. The existing home sales is again another gauge of the, the housing sector and the US Philly Fed. I wouldn't put too much weighting on that. In fact, it's it's not as been as volatile as it used to be, but do keep an eye on it nonetheless. Coming into Friday, we've got the European manufacturing PMIs and the Canadian core inflation rate. Now, just to take a quick look at the risk and money management plan. Obviously, I'm not trading this, but this is a hypothetical uh, risk and money management plan like I said I won't be trading this because I'll be away on holidays um, but this is pretty much how I would probably allocate my risk on the week uh, generally on Mondays I don't tend to put too much risk allocation because it's fresh out of the weekend I'm just starting to get back into the game and get my focus together I don't like to get too aggressive on Mondays Tuesday and Wednesday we've actually been seeing quite a decent amount of volume in the markets uh, you know on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Uh, so Tuesday, four venture risks, pretty high relevance with the inflation number. I'm looking at 20% risk allocation. Wednesday is our FOMC minutes. So I'm putting the most weighting on that together with the inflation numbers out of the US. Uh, really quite important. I think that should be at the forefront of your attention for next week. And then Thursday and Friday, 20%, 15% risk allocation accordingly. Um, Right, well, that is a very, very short and sweet um, weekly trading roadmap. Like I said, I really do uh, apologize that I couldn't do something a little bit longer and give you a little bit more context on the market, but it would be, I think, uh, a little bit foolish to try and show you guys where the markets are trading at the minute because uh, over a day, you know, over Friday, if a lot can change if news comes out and it would be a little bit pointless for me to go through that with you guys uh, so yeah thank you very, very much for listening uh, my name is Milto Civilis signing off for Futex Live in this weekly trading roadmap uh, good luck for the trading week and hopefully it's a profitable one bye bye